Hi, I'm Richard McKenzie, co-author of Microeconomics for MBAs. This uh, video module is going to be on cartels. A study of ca cartels is nothing more than an extension of uh, basic uh, monopoly uh, theory. I have drawn a uh, revised version of the uh, demand and marginal revenue curve for a monopoly and uh, the, uh, uh, I've changed the cost structure. I've made uh, marginal cost, uh, long run marginal cost, uh, constant and this is so uh, I can eliminate one uh, graph, one um, uh, curve from, from the graph because if in fact marginal cost is constant it's going to be equal to average uh, cost. Now if we're talking about a competitive market. This market will produce a quantity of uh, Q2, I mean, I'm sorry, QC, and sell the good for a price of uh, PC. If it's a monopoly market, then the monopoly will produce where marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue, which is uh, the intersection of marginal revenue curve and the marginal cost curve, or the monopoly will produce a quantity uh, QM and the monopoly will sell uh, that quantity for a price of a PM. And as a result, the monopoly will get, as we've indicated in previous um, uh, video modules, uh, will get a, a profit box equal to this uh, area uh, here. Now, if the firm, if the market is organized competitively, you can understand why the producers might want to get together uh, and uh, restrict output because if they do then they can uh, raise uh, the price and they can all divide up the uh, uh, monopoly uh, profits. The problem that the producers have is that uh, once they, uh, they go after uh, this profit box they understand that the producers also have an incentive uh, to chisel on any kind of cartel agreement. That is they almost uh, restrict output to some fraction of, of QM and then they must all charge a uh, price a PM. Suppose that there are only four producers in, uh, in this market. That means that each producer will be selling approximately uh, one-fourth of this total output, or a QM divided by four. That means that each producer will be uh, selling at a price of PM, and each producer will get a, uh, a profit equal to approximately one-fourth of that uh, monopoly profit box. Well, therein lies the problem in, in maintaining a cartel because each producer can reason, well, I'm only getting this area here in terms of, of cartel uh, profits. If I somehow just lower my price a little bit be below PM, then I can sell more uh, than, uh, uh, than QM divided by 4. I might, in fact, be able to uh, extend the market, take over the entire market, and, and get more in the way of uh, profit. Well, the uh, moral of the story is if the cartel has an incentive to, um, if cartel members have an incentive to restrict output, then they have an equal incentive uh, to undercut uh, the cartel agreement. And the more cartel members there are, the more difficult it is going to be to get a uh, cartel agreement, mainly because organizing a cartel can be uh, expensive. The more potential members, uh, the more expense that can be incurred. Also, the more members, the more uh, this uh, uh, quantity must be divided up, and the smaller the share of the profits any one member is going to uh, uh, get. And of course, if, if a uh, firm is getting only a tiny fraction of this overall uh, monopoly profits, then that firm has all the more incentive to chisel uh, on the cartel. So we might anticipate that cartels can only work with a small number of producers uh, two, four, six, maybe eight. Once you get beyond that, uh, you, uh, cartels tend to be uh, un, unstable. Now, one of the purposes of antitrust uh, legislation is to make illegal cartels, and that makes organization more costly uh, for the participants and therefore uh, more unlikely. But I guess I sh should point out that in the event that we have a cartel, that's formed and that we have the monopoly profits. Then the inefficiency, the inefficiency that's going to be created by this cartel is going to be equal to the triangular area that we've talked about in other video modules, uh, triangular area ABC. That's the inefficiency, that's the dead weight loss. That is also the gain to be had by breaking up uh, a cartel. And of course, uh, 
uh, there can be so social improvement if the cost of breakup is represented by an area like that, that is the cost of antitrust enforcement. But if in fact the cost of antitrust enforcement is, say, that, that large, then you can see that the cost of the enforcement is greater than the gains to be had from breaking up uh, the cartel. The lesson to be learned from uh, study of cartels is that yes, firms do have an incentive to uh, get together and restrict output and raise price, but they also have an equally strong incentive to undercut uh, any kind of uh, cartel uh, agreement. This is why uh, we rarely observe uh, cartels lasting for very long in the real world. And cartel agreements and, uh, are made even more difficult if in fact you have uh, open and free uh, markets. Uh, it's no wonder that uh, firms that want to cartelize their market oftentimes turn to government uh, for, uh, for the protection that they need, that is the uh, cartel agreement. Uh, farmers have turned to government to get the government to force them to restrict output. Why? There are so many farmers that it's very difficult for farmers uh, to collude and, uh, and to avoid uh, cheating on cartel agreements. Uh, thank you very much for being with me.